Crowfall is a game that, needless to say, did not go as planned. Now, when it comes to Crowfall, I have a unique perspective because I've been here since day one. I was a $500 Kickstarter backer. I have the collector's edition. I have documented Crowfall's entire development from the very first playtest on this YouTube channel. You can watch the whole timeline if you want to. I have been there and done that. I saw it all. In anticipation of Nerd Slayer's Death of a Game series on Crowfall, I figured I'd make my own. Shuck it, nerd! <laughs> Crowfall started off in January 2015 with the website play2crush.com. This gave off a mysterious vibe of a hardcore PvP MMO that was being developed where the consequences mattered. What could possibly go wrong with a hardcore MMORPG? Check it. Hardcore. We can achieve a level of complexity that you wouldn't believe. Hardcore. The Play to Crush teaser was extremely successful as many people that loved Shadowbane quickly figured out that J. Todd Coleman, the creator of Shadowbane, was the person heading this new game. So there were a lot of people very, very excited. J. Todd is a beloved developer. He has musical tribute videos to him on YouTube. It's very odd, but a lot of people really enjoyed Shadowbane and Wizards 101 and all the other projects he's been involved in, so the hype was real. The Kickstarter launched and was a massive success. It made more than double its $800,000 goal. Now, even in the Kickstarter, Crowfall said they never intended to be a mainstream game. They weren't planning on making a game for everyone. In fact, they flat out said that this game is not going to attract a mainstream audience and is not going to be for everyone maybe even including some of the backers. All of a sudden, they start doing spreadsheets and saying, okay, how can we adapt this game to appeal to a broader and broader audience because we'll make more money? And, and when you do that, the vision inevitably suffers. Crowfall's Kickstarter was a bit unique in that they were not relying on Kickstarter money specifically to get the game created. They mainly pitched the Kickstarter as a way to maintain creative control of the project and in my opinion, prove to outside investors that this game vision is real and that people want this. So even though they raised the vast majority of their money outside of the Kickstarter, uh, they ended up raising about $50 million total throughout the development of the game through investors, backers, licensing, and game stuff. Um, the Kickstarter was absolutely a massive success in sort of showing the, the general market, or at least the investors at the time, that there was a demand, at least in theory, for this kind of a game. Crowfall's earliest concept testing was a white sandbox game mode called Hunger Dome. This was a battle royale where teams of three could see who would survive the longest in this arena. Now, funny thing about Hunger Dome is that it came out in 2015 two years before PUBG and Fortnite popularized the Battle Royale game mode. Hunger Dome was only ever intended to be a testing game mode where the developers could get very focused feedback on combat, movement, and all the other engine features. It was a way to smash players together and see what breaks. That's what the, the function of Hunger Dome was with a little bit of a game wrapper on it. Combat during Hunger Dome was significantly different than what we got in the final product. There was much more of a focus on animation locked combat, similar to how New World plays. There were real world projectiles with spells. There was much more of an emphasis on player collision and physics. And for the most part, all of these things were entirely scrapped with the exception of a few examples. Um, it ended up being much more of a split body MMO, similar to how a World of Warcraft or Wildstar would play. Overall, I think this was a good decision. The juice just isn't worth the squeeze when it comes to physics and projectiles in MMORPGs. I think they're very overrated. They lead to a lot of server lag issues and just extra server calculations that, in my opinion, don't add to the gameplay. The animation locked combat started to feel okay towards the very end of testing, but again, probably wasn't worth the effort. The split body combat is much more lag tolerant and um, just easier to maintain and design around. So I'm a little split on that because I did sort of like it there towards the end, but I'm also not against the split body combat model either. Siege Perilous was the next phase of testing, which centered around voxel technology and more physics. This, at best, was a neat feature and at worst was extremely laggy and just not worth the time. 
Uh, the main premise of this testing was to test wall physics and to see if Crowfall could be a game where walls could physically be destroyed but still exist in the world, where you'd have to climb over the rubble of a destroyed wall rather than just having it sort of phase out of existence like every other MMO does. This ended up just not being worth it. It just didn't work. It was really laggy. Uh, the, it, climbing over the walls and the physics were just incredibly goofy. So they ended up scrapping pretty much everything from this testing phase entirely. The next system they debuted was the skill tree training. And this was a system that largely made it into the final game. They did end up iterating on it and effectively nerfing it to not require as much time as originally was intended. This skill tree system was to function like EVE Online's system where the skills train in real world time and it takes years to progress through skills and it's a long term progression system. This was nerfed into a much more short-term progression system that wasn't quite as powerful, but largely the concept made it into the final game. After that, we got the big world update, and this was the first time we got to be in a persistent online world. We were no longer testing Crowfall in instanced arenas, and we got disciplines, we got character customization, our first attempt at class builds. This was a super fun time in Crowfall testing because they just randomly dropped all of this on us one day and we were all just messing around, creating a bunch of different class combos. It was quite a bit of fun. Big world testing resumed and continued to grow larger and larger. Eventually, we started seeing things like 25v25 combat that didn't completely kill the server. We started to see forts come online, outposts come online. The performance was just getting better and better, and the combat was starting to shape up. They were starting to sort of figure out how the classes were being designed and, and what they were really going for when it came to the gameplay feel. And we were starting to actually play in a world where people were participating in harvesting, crafting, PvP objectives. The game loop, while extremely rough, was there. There was a loop, and it was pretty fun. In April 2020, at the very start of the COVID pandemic, we got to finally test the dregs. This was a great time to be a Crowfall backer because we finally got to test the game the way it was intended to be played. We were finally playing Crowfall, Guild versus Guild, in a campaign world with objectives that you could win. We had crafting, harvesting, a scoreboard, winners, losers. The whole game loop, for the most part, was there. Not all of the features were fully developed, but there was a game to be played that was fun. Crowfall scoring was done through a system called Divine Favor, which was a scoring system balanced around multiple objectives. Some of these objectives favored larger guilds, like the keeps and the forts and whatnot. There was traditional scoring, like we ended up seeing at launch in some cards. But then there was scoring that was centered around smaller, more efficient guilds. I personally thought the Divine Favor system was one of the coolest things they did. Yes, it was exploitable. Yes, they did need to iterate on things and fix you know, the exploits and maybe have a small amount of human moderation for a system like this to function. But I think that this was one of their biggest blunders, that they didn't iterate on this system further because I thought it was extremely interesting. There were a few really fun campaigns that, that came down to, you know, one card and people playing the, the, these different objectives. And it wasn't just a giant Zerg fest. I really, really enjoyed it. Now, there was a downside to Divine Favor. And that was that it really rewarded guilds that had a hardcore base of no lifers, to be honest. If you had a guild where it was like 25 people and they were all just a bunch of sweaty nerds, you owned the divine favor system. I'd much rather the game design favor the no lifers that play all day than the people that log on to Zerg with their siege and then log off immediately after, especially in a game where the players are the content. The divine favor objectives were a thing that kept people out in the world and playing outside of the siege hours. In the end, the divine favor system was replaced with the conquest system. The conquest system was a very basic, hold this node, accumulate points, the team with the most points wins. Now, this conquest system was less exploitable, but it was also far less interesting because it favored the large guilds. The more people you had, the easier your time was. There wasn't really any in interesting gameplay for the smaller guilds anymore. It was pretty lame, to be honest, because many of the campaigns ended up being mathematically decided, 
pretty early on. And while theoretically you could mathematically come back in a lot of situations, it ended up just not being worth the time and effort most of the time. Very rarely did somebody come back and win a campaign after somebody else had a huge lead. It just wasn't something people did. On August 11th, 2020, Crowfall entered beta, five years after development had started on the game. And this may seem weird, but in my opinion, the Crowfall beta was probably the most fun of Crowfall's entire life cycle. All of the systems were pretty new, so they were fresh in our brains. The game was still getting updates pretty frequently because they were just bringing new major features online. We were getting new classes, the meta was shifting. This period of Crowfall was something I feel a lot of players look back at fondly because it was just fun. The campaigns were very competitive. We had some ridiculous things happening because the game was entirely cross-region at that point and the Russians were still playing with us. So we had the wild hunt and allying with the Russians and using Google Translate to poorly, uh, poorly talk with each other. It was just a fun time. Even Summit 1G and Pace took interest in the game. Look at this guy's just, he's just, I'm playing this on Tuesday, bro. I'm playing this on Tuesday. I'm playing this on Tuesday. Raccoon motherfucker. We're all going to get down on this shit. We got to try it, man. It might be sick. Dude, why? Dude, it's a, it's launch day of a beta. Why would you not get down on it at least the first day to see if it's any good? It doesn't really feel like that because you and this is before it might be sick now it look dude i like how there's been we so far what have we seen from this their open world full loot pvp mode that they're doing is kind of cool we've seen huge fights so far and we've seen this motherfucker roaming and shitting on everybody he sees by himself as a solo and there's not that many open world fucking game types in today's day and age today's day and age that allows that type of freedom disagree they try to take our freedom, bro. Because it was just great. Uh, I ended up making one of my favorite YouTube videos of all time. Zy the Zyback 3 Crowfall montage is one of my favorite things I've ever made on YouTube and is just uh, great gaming memories. I you know, I absolutely have to file this era of Crowfall into the good memories folder of my brain. Hunger Dome is back. That's right. After five years, it's time to play some more Hunger Dome again. This Hunger Dome tournament was very obviously a marketing gimmick in preparation for Crowfall's launch. At this point, they hadn't officially announced the launch yet, but this came so far out of left field that it was, it was just very bizarre. However, it was something that people like myself and many others were cautiously optimistic about. It didn't make a lot of sense. But to be honest, there was some fun to be had because Crowfall's small to medium scale combat is the best gameplay Crowfall has to offer. I don't think too many people that actually participated in Crowfall's small to medium sized combat would have too many negative things to say about it. But it just didn't make sense. In the big picture, in the grand scheme of what Crowfall is, the ECS tournament was pretty bizarre. Crowfall being an open world game had a serious weakness, and that was that finding fun, fair, and compelling PvP fights could be few and far between, and certainly it wasn't guaranteed. So having Hunger Dome being a concentrated experience where you knew for sure you were going to get some fun Crowfall PvP was something that many people found appealing, and I feel like they were planning on developing this system further and having it almost be like a, a sub-game, similar to how WoW Arenas function. But they never ended up further developing Hunger Dome after the tournament. It just sort of died. One week after the Hunger Dome tournament was over, Crowfall officially announced its release date of July 6th, 2021. So July 6th, 2021 comes along, and Crowfall's launch goes relatively smoothly. The game did not have a massive surge of players they were hoping for, but there were a lot more players than we had ever seen. A lot of new faces, a lot of new guilds. People that had never logged onto the game were logging onto the game. So, what went wrong? Problem one, they didn't have a AAA marketing budget. Now, this isn't entirely their fault because they are, in my opinion, a AA game. They just don't have Activision or EA money, but... A lot of people don't understand that the marketing of a game is more expensive than the development of a game. Let me give you an example. Modern Warfare 2, the game that came out in 2009, that Modern Warfare 2, had a $250 million budget. $50 million of that went towards making the game. 
The other $200 million went towards marketing the game. The advertising budget for a game like Crowfall and a AAA game are just so staggeringly different that you just can't compare them. But Crowfall's marketing was so ineffective and so minimal comparatively that many players that backed the game, that owned the game, did not even know it came out. There are a lot of people that are just now hearing about Crowfall again because it's shutting down, even though they backed it on the Kickstarter six years ago. That's a lot of people. That's kind of crazy that that happened. Problem number two, 2,500 man alliances. You could have an alliance of five guilds in Crowfall and have 500 players per guild. So naturally, the game escalated into larger and larger and larger fights. And a 2,500 man alliance cap is huge considering the zones are capped at 250 players. So nearly all of the large scale PvP that happened at launch was extremely laggy. It was very zergy. And as we talked about previously in this video, more players was always better. Whether it was harvesting, crafting, PvP, every aspect of the game, having more people was always better. The only time this was not the case was when the Divine Favor scoring system was implemented and that was axed. So more was better and 2,500 man alliances were just crazy. Problem three, no show sieges and the lack of a handshake siege system. So Crowfall worked on a system called the siege schedule, meaning that two to three times a week, your forts and keeps could be attacked. This meant that regardless of if anybody was actually going to attack you, you needed to have your guild rally in preparation for a potential attack. So every Tuesday night, it meant that you need to get you and a hundred of your buddies online to sit in your keep and just see if somebody attacks. And the vast majority of the time, people wouldn't attack. So it led to the phrase, no show sieges, where a guild would organize and get everybody to log on. And everybody's ready and prepared and nothing happens. This would happen over and over and over again. And eventually it was a boy who cried wolf situation where people would just stop showing up because nothing happened and it was just sitting around being bored. And then somebody would attack and you'd get zerged and lose your keep and all that hard work that you built, you know, you did to build up that keep. Next problem. Let's say that somebody does siege your keep and you're there defending it. Oh boy, here's where the fun begins, right? It's time to go to war. Well, not really. In my opinion, the large scale gameplay in Crowfall just wasn't good. It was either laggy, zergy, clumpy, or spammy, or all of the above. Rarely was the large scale gameplay from an actual gameplay perspective good. And there was a phrase used to describe Crowfall sieges, and that was numbers sensitivity. The game was incredibly numbers sensitive, meaning that the group that had the most players playing the meta for the most part would win. This was the case 95 plus percent of the time. Now you will see YouTube videos where people are winning outnumbered fights, but generally that's one group playing the meta and another group playing random stuff or just a bunch of random noobs all organized together. Very rarely did one group playing the meta beat another group playing the meta and have less people. It just didn't happen. Next up, we have performance and optimization. Performance in Crowfall just wasn't very good. Crowfall had a procedurally generated world, and while I thought it, that was a pretty cool feature, it meant that the game world could not be heavily optimized. Static maps and static assets allow you to cheat when it comes to optimization. You can bake in lighting and do all sorts of tricks where you have one-sided textures, and you can do a lot of things when the map doesn't change, and you can really make the, the, the assets extremely performant. Ironically, I think Crowfall performed pretty well in large-scale battles, especially considering how many players were on screen. It was the small-scale combat and the general game feel that just felt off. You'd get inconsistent frame rates running around in a totally open field, and certain parts of the map would just lag. You'd just get like 30 frames a second in certain War Tribe camps, and when you go from playing a game like Overwatch, where it's you know a steady frame rate all the time, 144 frames a second, never drops and then you go and play crowfall and you're running around an open field with low texture grass and it's like 60 fps 40 fps 60 fps 40 fps that is incredibly jarring getting those little tiny micro stutters while the game is absolutely still playable i had a lot of fun with the game the, that 
That kind of stuff is very jarring and it makes your game feel exhausting to play, especially if you're coming from a AAA game like a Valorant and Overwatch, a CSGO, a game where you're not dealing with those frame drops and inconsistencies. Next up, we have the harvesting and crafting. And oh boy, was this a big problem. This system was just entirely too complex and required too many people. All of it was just a complete pain in the ass. And I don't think anybody would look back to the crafting and harvesting and all the hoops you had to jump through to do that and go, man, that was so fun. Nothing about all of that interdependency was fun. The big thing with crafting is that it was a huge organizational nightmare. And what ended up actually happening was that many of the people that wanted to craft just had like eight different accounts. Rather than dealing with eight separate people to get the things you need, it was just one guy with eight accounts. So many things about the crafting system were just a nightmare. One obvious example was just inventory management. Dealing with your inventory in Crowfall was a big part of the game. Like it was just a serious time sink, dragging around items. What's in my bank? What's not in my bank? What's on this alt character? What's on that character? What's in God's Reach? What's in the EK? It, all of it was just incredibly exhausting doing the export shuffle at the end of a campaign where you trade all the trade all the iron to this guy and trade all the skins to this guy. Everything about it was just in, extremely exhausting. Let's say you're like me and you just don't care about the crafting and harvesting game. You're like, oh, I'll just buy my gear from somebody else that sells it. Well, good luck because not only was crafting and harvesting a pain, trading other players was a pain. I have the gold and I want to buy the gear. And there's a player that has the gear and wants my gold. Surely that should be an easy transaction, right? No, not at all. Here's a few screenshots of just the sheer amount of bullshit you had to do to trade another player in this game. Crowfall did not have an auction house or a mail system. That meant that in order to trade a player, you had to physically find them in the world and trade them or their vendor. You could also not trade across factions or guilds, meaning that in a campaign, you couldn't just walk up to somebody in the temple and trade them. On top of that, all of the gear was custom crafted. A leather chest is not a leather chest. You can have a leather chest for an assassin wearing daggers, you can, ha you can have a leather chest for an assassin wielding axes, or you can have a leather chest for a stormcaller. All of those things are different and have different stats. So you can't just go buy a leather chest. It's got to be a leather chest specifically made for you. And like I said previously, even if you have the money and the other person has that specific piece of gear you want, trading them is a pain in the ass. They could be in an eternal kingdom. They could be in the shadows. They could be in God's reach. They could be in the campaign on a different faction. You have to drop trade them through letting you kill them in game and, and picking it up off their body. It was ridiculous. And now we have arrived at Crowfall's biggest problem, and that was the lack of small-scale PvP focus. Crowfall's strongest gameplay happened in small PvP skirmishes. This was why people were excited for Hunger Dome, despite the fact it was kind of stupid. Small-scale PvP in Crowfall largely was a random novelty. There were no features in Crowfall that actually encouraged real small-scale PvP. Outposts, that wasn't it. That was random PvP at best. Something that I and many people had been requesting for years is some sort of Hellgate system similar to Albion Online, where it was a very focused, small-scale PvP experience. Small-scale PvP outcomes were largely inconsequential. At best, they were bragging rights. Once guilds had their equipment sorted and their keeps built up, there just wasn't a lot of reason to be out in the world. Very rarely were campaigns so competitive that guilds were going for outposts throughout the entire duration of the campaign. Maybe through spring and summer it would be like that, but then eventually the math would get so dire that one side would realize that it's just not worth the pain in the ass of trying to compete, and they would just start siege logging, and the other guys would start siege logging, and yeah, there was just no incentive to be out in the world. And not only was there not an incentive, there was kind of an incentive to log out because you didn't want to break your gear. You got your gear, you might as well keep it for siege. Everything of real consequence that happened in Crowfall happened in large groups. The keeps, the forts, the entire scoring game loop itself happened in large groups. And I think small groups are okay with not winning. 
They just want to be able to have some degree of impact. They want to be able to make their mark on the world in some small way, some insignificant way that doesn't really matter to anybody else but them. But it's like, you know, they, ha they can point to this and say, hey, this is the thing we did. But that just wasn't the case. Small guilds were entirely irrelevant. 90% of Crowfall guilds could have been Thanos snapped out of existence entirely and nobody would have even noticed. That's how irrelevant they were. They did not matter. So what do you think happened? They eventually just got disenfranchised with the game and stopped playing. And that was the majority of players. The majority of players did not matter in any way. Not only was Crowfall a difficult game to play for your average friend group due to the harvesting, crafting, and zergy nature of the focused PvP content, but it was just hard to have fun as a small friend group. It was just hard to get any real meaningful action at all. Crowfall was not a game where you could hop on after work and have two hours of fun and log off. You just couldn't do that because if you jump on Crowfall with two of your buddies looking for some PvP, you may find a guy to kill. The guy you find is just going to be some solo guy harvesting who tries to run away, or you just get zerged by a group of 10 capping outposts in a giant group for some reason. It was a lot of boredom for very, very little fun. All of these factors led to the vast majority of players, the players that are not in these large organized guilds, becoming completely disenfranchised with the game. There's just nothing of significance for them here. There is no game for them. Unfortunately, a lot of Crowfall's design was heavily lobbied for by members of these large guilds. A lot of the original Kickstarter backers were members of these pre-existing Shadowbane guilds. So, throughout the duration of testing, they were the most prolific and active testers. Now, this is not their fault. I'm not blaming the downfall of Crowfall on these guilds. But I am blaming the developers for giving too much time and attention towards their experience and uh, and their pet problems compared to the average player experience because there was a massive echo chamber on the forums where uh, a person from a large guild would raise an issue on the forums and it would seem like it was a huge issue that people were really all up in arms about, but it was really just a bunch of people from these big organized guilds and the average player just wasn't participating in testing at that time. So I feel like if all of the time that was spent on these large guild pet projects was spent towards the average player experience and the small friend group experience, the game would have ultimately ended up in a better place because you can't have the experience at the top of the food chain work without the bottom of the food chain. Just like the real life ecosystem, the stuff at the bottom of the food chain is more important than the stuff at the top. So what now? Well, Artcraft ended up selling Crowfall to a company called Monumental. And funny thing about Monumental is that the CEO of Monumental is actually a Crowfall player and ex-Shadowbane player. Monumental likely bought Crowfall for pennies on the dollar. I assume they got a bargain, and they should have. On a positive note, Monumental appears to actually be developing Crowfall, and they plan on doing something with the property. They brought over a large amount of the pre-existing Crowfall developers into their company, and the CEO of Monumental on Discord said they're doing a tech evaluation and seeing what their options with Crowfall are. They've hired additional staff to work on the games. They even added minor features to Crowfall before shutting it down. So it's pretty clear they're going to do something with Crowfall. I'm sure it's going to be some sort of relaunch on Steam, free to play. The question is, what is the pivot going to be? What is Crowfall 2.0 going to look like and when? It's unfortunate that Crowfall didn't work out. And before you dance on their grave too much, realize that most multiplayer games, particularly MMORPGs, do not work. Most of them fail. Most of them fail to meet expectations, whether that's corporate expectations or the expectations of the players. Very rarely does a multiplayer game actually work out for the long term. Think about how many popular multiplayer games are and how many have come out. Most of them don't work. But I will say that even though I was a $500 Kickstarter backer, I absolutely got my money's worth. Crowfall, for the most part, is a game that I can file into the good memories category of my brain. I think Crowfall has a lot of great things going for it. The races, the classes, the character customization, the general gameplay are all pretty good. They could repurpose Crowfall into an arena game, similar to like Ring of Titans, and it would probably be pretty fun. There are a lot of options 
for what they do with the Crowfall platform. And it can be used for a lot of potential gameplay variations. There's a lot of good stuff there. Uh, unfortunately, this vision of the game did not work out, but I'm optimistic. So let me know what your thoughts are on Crowfall in the comments down below. Hope you enjoyed the video. Have a good one. As of recently, this entire YouTube channel has been demonetized. So if you're enjoying the content, consider making a small donation. Also, click the link tree down below and follow me on all of my other various social medias as I'm trying to diversify. Thanks again for all the support, everybody. Have a good one.